My name is Diane Belford and I'm a vintage jewelry dealer. Right now we're at the Morristown Armory Show in Morristown, New Jersey. I've been selling jewelry for almost 40 years. I started my career at Pratt Institute uh, learning how to make jewelry, restore jewelry, and repair jewelry. And now I am a vintage jewelry dealer. I travel all over the United States uh, to buy jewelry and I also sell jewelry from Texas to the Northeast and down to Florida. Okay, Diane, let us take a look at some of your jewelry here. What would you like to see? How about this case? Okay. Um, this piece here is what we call a sotoir. It is uh, steel cut beads uh, strung on silk and um, it is an Art Deco piece. And you take it and you would take that piece and tie it and wrap it around your neck. It's a flapper piece. Mm, beautiful. And I'll just scan this uh, showcase. Uh, can you show us some piece that's interest in this? Uh... Well, we have a, a variety of jewelry in here. We have uh, Mexican silver. We have some contemporary silver. We have uh, Italian mosaics. I've got arts and crafts, uh, probably uh, Hobe sterling silver pieces from uh, the 1920s. We have some pocket watches. We have some Czech bracelets, Czechoslovakian bracelets. Uh, these come from uh, that country in Eastern Europe, very popular antique jewelry. Uh, contemporary piece is fuzzy little balls with crystals. It's a piece by Vendome. We have a Bakelite sunflower. Bakelite is an early plastic. It's very popular in vintage jewelry. I have uh, another Czech bracelet here with an Egyptian uh, type uh, Middle Eastern motif on it. And I uh, have a modernist piece in sterling silver with uh, intaglio glass uh, discs on it uh, by an artist uh, in Philadelphia. And uh, this is another Czech bracelet. I have a French bracelet here. And then I have some coral. I have some flapper necklaces along the side here. I have over here, this is an old African necklace. This is from the 1930s. It is made out of horn, dyed, and carved. Very unusual because it's carved. Most necklaces from that era are oval beads and that are just uh, very smooth. So that makes that one very unusual. And then I have some Venetian glass over here, um, beads, as well as some West German pieces. I have a sterling retro pin, and I have some Celtic style pieces as well in this case. So it's a real mix. I even have an Indian American Indian necklace in here that's made out of clamshells and coral as, and turquoise. Now this is a perfect example of history influencing fashion in a particular era. This piece was uh, most likely produced in the 1970s when the King Tut exhibit came to the United States. So you can see the Egyptian collar influence. Of course there's rhinestones in it which did not exist at that time in history. It is the gold color that uh, the Egyptians used. However, they favored silver. They felt that silver was more valuable. Another piece that I have up here that's really quite lovely and extremely unusual is this Austrian crystal necklace. 
Uh, I do have a lot of Austrian jewelry. This one is signed. However, as a necklace in this size uh, is extremely rare. You don't see a piece like this too often. It's the only one I've ever had like it in my career. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. I have a presentation here of bracelets. Uh, a variety of bracelets. I have lucite. Um, this particular bracelet is an African piece that's made out of shell. Another lucite. I have wood and plastic. This is Tibetan amber, rhinestones. This bracelet is made out of horn. This one is leather, metal, a combination of uh, amber and horn uh, dyed colors uh, to uh, look really cool. Another horn bracelet. And then I have all my rhinestone bracelets here in these trays and they're all laid out so it's easy to see. This one is quite beautiful. This is what's known as a new old stock piece. It is a vintage piece that has never been worn and when I bought it it was in the original wrapper uh, like acetate uh, or celluloid, whatever material they used at the time. This one is a 1950s copper piece bracelet. Also has the earrings to match. I have a variety of bracelets, uh, rhinestones. I have a necklace and earring and bracelet set here. Rhinestones, this is 1940s. And over here, I have a real variety. Um, I have a Turkish necklace up here. Uh, then we have this floral piece with enamel made by Avon that's American. I have an Art Deco rhinestone necklace over here. And then the tassel necklace is circa 1970s. I have some rhinestone earrings, very large, probably 1940s. A nice collar necklace, most likely 1950s. And then I have some very large earrings. Um, these are Czechoslovakian, and they're probably 1980s or so. They're pierced ears. I have a lot of earrings that are also for uh, clips, where you don't need to have holes in your ears. Mm -hmm. And where can we uh, contact you, Diane? Uh, you can contact me at my AOL, AOL address. That's Diane, D-I-A-N-E, and then Jem, G as in George, E as in Edward, M as in Mary, at AOL.com. I also have a store on eBay, and my eBay sto uh, store ID, seller ID, is Diane Jem or it, you could look me up under my store. It's Twinkling Jewels and Collectibles. Make sure you put a hyphen in between the words for the stores at eBay address. Okay, thank you so much, Diane. All right, we'll be looking forward to contacting you. You're welcome, and thanks for visiting me, Ruth. <laughs> okay. <laughs>